So if that's all right with you, with you guys, I'm just going to jump in and tell you a little bit about myself and the clowning that I do. And um, probably just chat for a few minutes and then we're going to get into a practical exercise where ideally, I mean, you don't have to at all, but ideally you would get up and actually work a little bit on your feet in the space. It's going to be very playful, very fun, easy. Um, and then depending how things going, I might ask us to, to um, do a little bit of sharing of that work with each other. Uh, and then, as I say, we'll, I'll leave some time at the end for some questions and, and just general kind of debrief. Does that sound good? Everyone cool? Okay, awesome. Well, um, so I, my, my name is Barnaby and I'm a clown. I'll say that right up front so that you know. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I have a, a business, an organization called Clown Spirit, which um, occurred during the pandemic um, as a response to being online primarily. And I've been developing the tools of, of clowning online which is a kind of a radical idea, really, because, you know, clowning really in most people's minds and mine before that was really very much about presence, being about being in the room with, with people and, and about the eye contact and the connection with the audience. And the idea of doing that online um, was difficult at first, but I've been developing a lot of tools and um, a kind of whole uh, universe, clowniverse, you might call it, um, in clown spirit. So if you're interested at all, you can check it out. It, it, my website is www.clown-spirit.com. I also have a YouTube channel, which is also called Clown Spirit. And there's a ton of material on that YouTube channel. Um, conversations or clown conversations with, um, with important leaders in the field of clowning, which you probably didn't even know there were such a thing as important leaders in the field of clowning, but there are. And um, I did a lot of interviews with them over the last year or so, and I'm continuing to do that. And so what I've, what I've kind of committed myself to is this idea of, of providing resources for people in, in the clown world uh, online. Um, my own clown goes back, obviously, much further than that. I've been clowning since I was uh, in my mid-20s, uh, so around 2000 was when I started. And, um, you know, when I discovered clowning, it was uh, a revelation for me because I was involved in theatre before that, but I never had any idea of what clowning truly was. And my transformative moment was meeting um, the person who is my sort of um, primary mentor and teacher, whose name is Sue Morrison. And I always acknowledge her in all my work because she's so influential in, in what I do. She's based in Toronto. You can look her up, Sue Morrison. And she taught a kind of a form of clown, which... Um, is inspired by the Native American concept of clown and uniting that or, bring, or merging that with a more European kind of approach to theatrical and circus clowning. And this, um, this, this cultural sort of merging was, was very powerful for me. As soon as I took this workshop and stepped into this clown space, I realized it was much more than what I'd ever considered clowning to be before, that it was much more than just making people laugh. For example, if that was your idea of clowning or getting pies in the face or falling over or, you know, big wigs and big shoes and scary makeup, um, all these kinds of stereotypes, you know. And even even the good clowns, even what I knew of as um, uh, funny uh, talented artistic clowns and, and clowns from the movies and from television. It was, it added a much deeper, profound, more profound sense of um, spiritual connection, the sacred connection with the sacred. 
And um, when I stood in front of a, in front of people and did the exercises, uh, I felt this this power and this this sort of um, connection to uh, to what Sue calls the clown gods, right? Which uh, this kind of potential for connecting with your inner clown and the and the, the the connection with the clown gods is accessed via via some very awesome um and somewhat mystical exercises that take a long time to go through so there's a whole kind of training process that sue has and she can she 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 takes people through which lasts several months and you can go to toronto and do that the for me also the the link with Native American clowning was very powerful because in a lot of traditional uh, clown cultures around the world, historically and, and in the present day, um, clowning holds a very important place in society. It's not, you know, we give clowns a very bad rap, right? There's a, there's, it's, even the word clown is used in a kind of pejorative, demeaning sense. We talk about clowns, people we don't like as clowns, politicians, leaders that we don't like, that have overstepped whatever, are idiots. We call them clowns. And in a way, getting in contact with these other traditions of clowning allowed me to reclaim and is allowing us and many people to reclaim this term of clown as a, as a powerful and vital and life-giving practice. And the one that's central and important to keeping a society alive and balanced. And I think a lot of people doing clowning today, for example, in hospitals, hospital clowning, are one example of people who are reclaiming this kind of importance and relevance of clowning as a healing art. And people who are doing humanitarian clowning, clowns without borders all around the world, in places where there are humanitarian crises or um, different kinds of hardships that are being experienced, bringing the clown to that. Um, also, I think political protest clowning, acti clowning activism, which is a big and growing thing, is another way in which people are reclaiming the significance and centrality of, of the clown in society. So there's many, many, many different forms of clown, right? Many different. And in my work, I don't reject any of them. I try to be as inclusive as possible and to create community um, in which all those clown practitioners um, and even people just who are interested in clowning but aren't really doing any, any can, can find a home. There are many, um, I suppose, features of all those different kinds of clowning that are different, that are distinct. For example, some really, for some, really, laughter is really important, is key, whereas for others, it's much more about a range of different emotions or it may be about wanting to transform the audience in some way. But for me, there is one element that unites all of these um, or underlies, let's say, all of these different clown practices. I think that fundamentally clowning is about reconnecting us with our humanity. By which I mean our folly, right? Our stupidity, our ignorance in all its beauty. But to remind us when we get to these places of um, thinking that we have it figured out and that we have some kind of control in our lives or over other people, or that we have some kind of special knowledge or superiority, the clown is what reminds us of our true nature, of our humanity, of our base earthly reality. The word clown itself originates from the word clod in Old English. And a clod is a lump of earth. It's a lump of dirt, right? That's just like mud. <laughs> it's 
So this is what the clown is. It's like the earthly, the most dirty, misshapen, unattractive, unbeautiful thing. And yet there is a beauty to this. And that's where, for me, the juice of clown, it's finding, it's, it's this ambiguity, it's this contradiction of that something earthly and kind of misshapen can emerge as and be seen as something beautiful. And that, I think that's the clown's job is to put that in front of us people as an audience or just to find that, locate that within ourselves. So clowning becomes a practice of personal development as much as a practice of entertaining or um, uh, sharing with, with, with an audience or performing. There's, okay, one more thing before we jump into some work. There's a, there's a phrase which I think beautifully sums up clown for me, which is that in clown, we learn to face all directions of ourselves. And when we do that, we'll laugh at the beauty of our own ridiculousness. So let me just break that down a second. So what do I mean by facing all directions of ourselves? So, I mean, part of that comes from a Native American cosmology and mythology and ritual practice that there are directions which are north, south, east, west, above, above, and below, below. But I think more simply, we all have, dif- we all have directions within ourselves, right? We all have features and aspects of ourselves we're not one unitary being, even though we want to present ourselves as that in many instances. In our education, we're taught, and in our social interactions, in our jobs online, we are kind of trained to present ourselves as this one thing, right? We value sort of purity. But the re- reality is, we are many things, we are many identities and opinions. And many of them don't match one another. They're in tension and in in friction and contradiction with each other. So how can we learn to face all directions of ourselves, even at the same time, and admit and acknowledge all of that diversity in ourselves? And when we do, we will find that it's funny, that we laugh at it. Right, because of the the pretense that it doesn't exist, the pretense that we are one thing, that we know what we're doing. And in fact, we're all these many different things that many of which contradict each other. And there's something humorous about that gap between our vision, our sort of projection of ourselves and, uh, and, and the cold reality. We'll laugh, the rest of the phrase is, we'll laugh at the beauty of our ridiculousness. So we are already ridiculous. This is the beautiful thing about clown. We don't really have to do very much because we are already. (laughs) We are already clowns. We just have to kind of allow that and and to become comfortable with it because we're not, most of us are not very comfortable with our, with our clowns. And again, and it's beauty and the beauty of our ridiculousness. So we have, there is an aesthetic quality to this. As clowns, we are also artists. We are learning to kind of shape and sculpt our ridiculousness into some kind of, um, in some way that doesn't make it classically beautiful, right? But, but a, a maybe accentuates in some ways the... Um, the ridiculousness or the ugliness or the misshapen quality in ways that are somewhat intentional. But there's always this balance, right, between spontaneity and intentionality, um, improvisation and structure. So that leads me quite nicely into what we're going to do today. Uh, This little exercise that I have planned for you guys So clowns for me exist on a borderline, on a boundary. Um, 
for example, between the sacred and the human. Clowns are not human. They're not gods either. They're kind of people gods. They're kind of like they're hovering somewhere in the middle, not really um, putting their foot in, you know, a foot in both camps or a foot in neither camp, right? They're both and. They, they embrace the contradiction and the difference. So clowns love spaces which are liminal. So we're going to do an exercise about liminality and thresholds and the idea of stepping across thresholds into change, into unknown territory, and just what that feels like to be kind of flying blind a little bit, to be to jump over the edge of a cliff. I don't know if you know the Joker or the Fool in in um, the Fool card in Tarot, the Tarot pack. He's very often de depicted as just jump, just walking off the edge of a cliff, right? If you've seen that. This is the feeling of, of clowning, really, of stepping out in front of an audience with, with an idea of something that we want to say or do, but that in the moment of stepping out to do or say that thing, we are stepping into a void, a vacuum, an un a space of unknown, where that thing we've planned may or may not happen, may change completely. Because prior to coming out, it's a bit like being in the mind, right? Where we have a plan. You know, when you're planning something that you're going to do in front of people, for example, and you have this idea of what it's going to be like in your mind. And then you step out in front of the people. And if you're really looking at the people, you, your whole state of mind transforms, right? It's not the same anymore. And often what you planned goes out of your head, goes out of the window, you know, and so you can strategize to kind of ignore all those people and just do what you were going to do. And people do that very effectively. Or you can allow this beautiful thing, which is connection with the people in front of you, with the audience. You can allow the fact that you're in a completely different space it's not you're not in the head you're in you're in collective um, connected space and then it's an improvisation right with with the thing that you plan to do still there maybe but coming out in a in a way that's unique to this encounter so we're just going to play with that um and you're going to hopefully feel what that what I'm talking about more in the body rather than a kind of abstract concept. So what I'd like you to do is a little bit of setup involved here. And if this doesn't work for you or you just want to observe, it's completely fine. Um, but I would invite you just to play a little. The, so the setup is that I want you to move your camera or screen, your setup, so that it's facing some kind of doorway or entranceway in your space. So there could be a door to another room. Yes, Andrew, perfect. Yes, lovely. Rowan, that will do. They have an outside, a door to the outside is great. Could be a closet. <laughs> you could come in and out of a closet because you're going to be coming in and out of this door. Um, it could be just an archway in your space that leads to a, another part of the space. Or a corner that you can kind of disappear around. Or if, you, if you're really desperate, you could just set up your couch in, in a way that you could be behind the couch. <laughs> yes, Rehana, you have a nice couch there. It might be difficult to get behind. Okay, so whatever it is for you. Do that. And then good. I want you to just have a go at just walking through that door into this space. And I want you to imagine that the space in front of the camera is kind of uh, on. When you're in front of the camera, you're on. 
or you're in the space. We're not going to do the spotlighting just yet. Dan, it's going to come in a little bit. So you're good. You can join in. Um, and when you're behind the door, you're off. <laughs> good. Very nice, Andrew. Yes. <clears throat> When you're behind the door, you're off or you're out. And when you're in front of the camera, you're on. Nice, Sierra. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> I like it, Albert. Yes. You know, the nice thing about Zoom is that because you've got this box, this screen, off stage could actually just be off the screen. It could actually just be that you step out of the camera shot and back in and that's your off and on i just like having a physical door because there's something about doors great carolina <laughs> yes maximum fun right nothing is too silly or childish in clown it's what you would do right now if you were five or six or seven and you were asked to do this exercise you would just you could even make fun of the exercise. See if you can break the rules. <laughs> Good, Jessica. I'm imagining what you're saying. Great. Yes, Moyo. Yes. Maybe you could come out from, but just you could pretend that the chair is <laughs> and just pop out from the chair. Good, Tao. I'm saying that right. <laughs> Very good. Yes, I love it. <laughs> so what does it feel like to be off? And what does it feel like to be on? And try going off and practicing some little action. Very simple. When you're off stage, I don't actually not going to use the word stage, just off. What happens when you're off and you practice a little action? Anything, it doesn't really matter, anything super simple. And you practice it so that you feel really good about it. Something you, you, you feel good about, that's important. And you're going to show it to people. You're going to show this thing, this action. You're gonna... To me, primarily, right? I'm the, uh, I can be your audience here. I don't know if you're on gallery or speaker view, but if you're on speaker, I'm going to be sort of dominating your, your screen and you can present this to me. So have this little action, this idea of an action, and then experience the intention of coming in to do that action and then step through your door or your entrance, encounter this space of on. <laughs> Kevin, <laughs> that was good. I actually don't know if that was uh, intentional or you actually, something scared you on the floor. <laughs> good, Jessica. Good, yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice, Moyo. Yes. Oh, I love it, Rowan. Yeah. Yeah, feeling it. Oh, very beautiful, Albert. Yes. Linnea, amazing. Oh, my goodness. It's <laughs> incredible. <laughs> and if you want, you can take a moment to just watch what the, some of the crazy other things other people are doing. And, but not everybody, because then no one will be doing anything crazy. So what does it feel like to come into the space and then have to do this action? Does it feel the same as when you did it off? Knowing that I'm watching? Or does it feel different? And if it feels different, how does it feel different? Try it again. Something super simple, an action. Play it a few times for yourself off stage. Sorry, off, just off. And this time I want you to really 
be intentional about the moment of entering. So it's not just an entrance and you're bang, you're here. I want you to almost slow down the moment of entering so that you really feel the transition. Good, Andrew, yes. Really feel that transition. <laughs> Good. Now, clowns love more than anything. They Well, maybe not more than anything, but one thing they love is being in the space of transition. So I want everyone just to get up and go and stand in your in your doorway for a moment. And if you're if you don't have a doorway, find a place where you're halfway on and sort of halfway off. And just feel how delicious this space is. Right. You're not in. You're not out. You're both. And you can just come and go just a little bit, just wave it back and forth, just a little bit between on and off. Just feel the, how it, what does it feel like to cross the border, the boundary, or maybe to close the door if you have one and just poke your head around it or just an eye around it. What are the possibilities of play just within that door frame? Can you fill it? Can you hold it? Can you expand within it? Can you shrink within it? Can you hang off it? Nice, Jessica. Yes, beautiful. Good, Sierra. Yes. Find the possibilities of play of the actual door itself or the entrance. Good, Moyo. Yes. Feel the fun of being just on that borderline between on and off. Like the kid playing peekaboo, right? Just, and thinking that they're not seen. You know when little children think they're not being seen and they're hiding behind something and you can actually see them and they sort of know that they can be seen, but they're hiding, right? So they're still off in a sense, but there's just an eye or just a little side of the face it's just peering round <laughs> good Rowan. you guys are already clowns <laughs> yes good carolina very good now imagine this, this whole slow down exploration of the doorway, Linnea. <laughs> I love it. Imagine this is an entrance. So you're coming into the space and you've come into the space and most of you are in the space at this point, but if you're not come into your space through the door, and then I want you to explore the opposite, going out through that doorway. What does it feel like to go the opposite way? How is it different? If you slow down that moment of leaving, so you're still, you're transitioning the same space, but it's an exit instead of an entrance. How does it feel? Remember, remember me here as the, and your other people as your spectators holding the space for you. Good, Rowan, yes. It has a totally different quality to it, right? Totally different. To feel that, how, how much can you draw out that moment, that quality of whatever it is? I don't want to give it a name because it's going to be unique to you. Beautiful, Rahana, yes. What is the physicality that calls 
that's called for in that moment of ending the encounter, let's call it, the end of the encounter that will never ever happen again. This moment, this particular encounter will never happen again in this exact way. So it's the ending of something and it reminds us of the impermanence of everything. But of course you can always come back in again. <laughs> like the river, you can always jump back in it, but it will have moved. Beautiful. Now, one more time, I want you to plan something off stage, off. So go off and plan something. And this time, when you come in, I want you to step into the unknown. As in, I want you to be prepared to fully let go of the thing that you prepared. And be completely in the shit, as we call it in clown. In the shit means you have nothing. You're just, it's like the moment of forgetting your lines, forgetting your, what you were supposed to do. So start off with an action in mind and then slow down the entrance and encounter me in the space or other people in the space on the screen in, a, in such a way that you are so present and connected that whatever happens in a sense doesn't matter because all your all your your responsibility is to the moment and to what the space requires in that moment so what you had planned doesn't matter anymore but it may still happen. I want you to find out. So you're gonna go off, you're gonna think of something. You're gonna come in, slowing down this entrance in a way that's paying attention fully. Good, Rahana, yes. Good, great, Kevin, yes. Great, Jessica. And you're going to discover what this moment truly is. What does the moment call for? Beautiful. Good. Nice, Dao. Yes. Good. And you may notice other people on your screen and those other people can also, good in here, <laughs> allow a little bit of connection with those other people on the screen. And maybe that influences what you're doing. <laughs> good, Sierra, yes. And just notice how incredible it is, how connected we can all be without sound, without physical presence, co-presence, right? We're all in different parts of the world. All we can see is a couple of inches of space of, of a person. And it's totally beautiful and ridiculous. <laughs> Good, Albert. Yes. Nice, Dan. Beautiful, very elegant foot. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Take a breath, take a breath, relax. Yes, I know it, it's not possible to switch out immediately out of this kind of state once you're in it, but just take a breath. Yes, very nice. Now, Dan, this is where I'd like to do some spotlighting. So I would like to invite a small number of you, maybe three or four, whoever really wants to jump in, just to do a very quick experiment. 
where you are going to each do what we just did. You're going to go off stage. You're going to plan something. And then you're going to come in three or four people all at the same time. And we're going to spotlight your videos so that there's three or four large boxes on the screen. And um, as you come in, you're going to be connecting with one another. You're going to be letting go of the thing that you'd planned before you came in. And you're just going to play in a space of unknown. And it'll just be what it'll be. And we'll discover and learn something. So if there are three or four people who would be willing to do that, that'll be awesome. I'm just going to let you volunteer yourselves, I guess, with just a, a hand. Or a funny face. Kevin. Yay. Thank you, Kevin. Rahana. Awesome. Tao. Yes. And Choi, Choigan. Am I saying that right? Great. Okay. That's four. So Dan. Oh, you're doing it. Excellent. You could, you should be able to spotlight all four of those people. So you guys clear what you're doing. You're going to go off. You're going to plan something very simple. And if everyone goes to uh, speak of you, everyone switch to speak of you, including the people who are going off, that'll make um, the, those four boxes, four, four squares appear larger than all the rest. So the four of you are going to be off. You're going to plan something. You're going to slowly come in, exploring that space of liminality, of being in and out. And it might take you five minutes just to get into the space. I don't know. You know, it doesn't matter. It can be as slow as you want. And you don't all have to come in at the same time. You, some of, you know, it could be one and then another and then another. And we'll just see what emerges. Once you're in the space, your only responsibility is what the space and the moment requires of me. So it might be that you just kind of watch, see what the others do and give them space and then jump in with your action later as a response. Or you might never do your action. It might be that you're just connecting with what's going on and being completely spontaneous in the moment. Okay, so you may or may not do your action. So everyone go off. We're going to start again. It was a good start, Kevin. Good start, everyone. But I want you, to, I want, I'm going to shut up and just focus on what you're doing. Okay. You can start anytime. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> the rest of you watching, feel free to unmute so that we can hear your, if, if you love, if you have like some <laughs> response in the moment, it's nice to hear it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> beautiful Rahana yeah just follow your impulse trust <laughs> and <laughs> you guys notice everybody notice everybody in your there's four people there so notice what everybody is doing Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> Good. Good. Follow the follow the game. <laughs> you stay connected to whatever what is going on in the rest of the boxes good <laughs> good yeah good yeah. good yes yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> good and this feels like to me like a good moment to start the yes the movement back and it can be slow Okay, very good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, you guys, for the for being so brave as to volunteer and to do that. I really, really enjoyed that so much. I thought I think, you know, as often happens in this exercise, there is a beautiful shape to the to the whole thing, it has its own sort of uh, life and logic. And the thing that for me crystallized everything was when people really started to pay attention to Rahana and because you were in a different state from everyone else, you were in a different place. Everyone was party in party mode, right? Playing and you were back there sort of reluctant. And when people noticed that and they started to come towards you with, with offers and connection and draw you in and that, that flower was the kind of uh, culmination of that when you accepted that offer and integrated into the group felt like the the climactic moment of the you know of this little presentation and then it was okay then then right then it's kind of okay and then we can leave so it has this natural shape to it and I don't know why really or I don't really understand on a cosmic level like means but clowning always has a shape it always you know, clown enters and something happens and it builds to something and then it kind of moves in a different direction, right? There's this apex, it moves in a different direction and then there's a, a departure or a moving on. So it's a, it's a little narrative, I guess. So beautiful. So that was the, that was the practical exploration that I wanted to do. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I thought it'd be nice to have sort of 10 minutes at the end, just to have a chat really, and you know, answer any questions. So if you guys want to um, unmute, or if you want to just raise a hand and, or just jump in, I don't really have a sort of formal way of doing it, but yeah, does anyone have any thoughts, I guess, responses or questions? Please just go right ahead. What are ways that we can invite clowning into our 
daily lives, you know, if we're not able to go to Toronto and take an amazing course <laughs> with someone or, you know, of course we have like time spent learning, like watching your YouTube or visiting your website. But I mean, like in the little moments where we're maybe talking to ourselves in the mirror or, you know, interacting with the people that we love or mm. you know, how do we invite and open and welcome space for more of this playful energy where we don't take ourselves so seriously and can kind of laugh at ourselves. Do you have any things that just come to your mind? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is something that I'm really um, fascinated about and focused on. So um, last week in my Facebook group, which is, you can join by the way, it's called way of the clown. And um, last week I ran a series of sessions called Clown Hacks. And they were like little 20 minute Facebook live sessions. And each day was a different clown hack, right? So day one was about breath. As for me, breathing is, is integral to clown. And it's really, really helpful as a practice in everyday life as well. A particular kind of breathing that I teach, uh, clown sometimes call it a clown meditation or clown breathing um and then on the second day i talked about um the idea of play big and play big means well sort of literally what it sounds like really that we can that we, everything is is a game everything is to be played but that instead of keeping ourselves small all the time we have this possibility to tap into a much deeper kind of playfulness. Um, and I think that's something that similar to what you were just mentioning that, you know, in these little moments in our daily lives where we notice that there is some kind of game we're playing, which is maybe a structure um, like, um, um, you know, scheduling something or planning our day or um, doing a piece of work that we've been given to do, right? That, or doing our finances, I don't know, that each or each of these things has, has a game playful quality to it, that we can tap into that playfulness and not just access it on its own level, but access it, access a deeper level of um, what I call infinite, the infinite play or the infinite game. I don't know if, you guys, if you've come across this book by James Carr's called Finite and Infinite Games. It's a really great book. Um, and he talks about these two levels of, of games and playfulness. So yeah, I was giving kind of practical tips about how you can do that. Um, and then the, I did three more days of those clown hacks. So you can go into that clown, into that group on Facebook and you can actually find those videos and, uh, hopefully they will give you some some tips. Also, I just want to mention as and Dan has has taken several of my online courses. So it's not necessary to go to Toronto to do clowning or to go anywhere to do clowning because we have now this resource um, of of online stuff. And I've been developing it for two years to where I feel like I can do some really powerful things online. So I have courses that are available on my website that are, I think, Dan, you've just taken ones that are pre-recorded, right? You haven't actually done the live courses with me. You've just done. Yeah, with the schedule here, the, the pre-recorded self-directed courses have been awesome. Mm. Um, but yeah, I hope to do a live course before too long. Yeah. But it, I mean, from the feedback you've given me, it sounds like you've got a lot out of those pre-recorded ones. Yeah, a ton. And it's been great to kind of mold it to my schedule and to be able to kind of move at my own pace. Um, but yeah, very rich. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's kind of my guiding force right now uh, in clowning is, is that course. Yeah. So, yeah, so you can go to my website and find those. The, 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 I guess the course I'm most excited about that's there is called The Clown Connection. And it's an eight-week course that... Um, takes you through uh, a lot of historical and cultural context. So if you're interested in that sort of research part of it, I do these kind of lecture presentations with in-depth um, explorations of lots of issues around clowning. But then there's also practical workshops 
um, every week on different themes. There's another course called Awaken Your Clown Spirit, which is more of a beginner's course, which is short. Um, and there's another one called Create Your Clown Masterpiece, which is more about creating a product or a piece of work. Okay, I've got some hands. Carolina. Carolina, go right ahead. You'll have to unmute. Can you hear me? No, maybe not. Kevin, do you want to go? Sure, I'll step in. It looks like Carolina's frozen. Um, oh, yeah. Does Kevin want to go first? I think he had his hand up first. Well, there we go. Um, I just wanted to um, share a little bit of, of my experience going into this. Yeah. Um, because I I jumped into, into this uh, particular workshop because clowning um, or, or being playful is something that is mostly been missing from my life. And as I went behind the door for the first time, I was like down there in the darkness, like saying stuff like, this is so stupid. <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah. Um, and about five minutes in, and I stayed behind for, for a long time, just that space in between exploring um, where I felt like behind the door, I was holding myself and out in when I was on, I was being then held. So there was like this engagement and I realized um, like this was kind of like a deep thing for me of childhood wounding, but like how my crazy self was never invited as a child. And in fact, it was always um, punished. Mm. And so I learned to keep that inside. I was kind of hoping I might access some of that today and being able to play and then come out in the group and be welcome and have that space where yes, it is okay to not just hold myself, but also like enter that space of being held and, and dance within the group um, was a really beautiful experience for me. So just want to say um, thank you. And thank you all for uh, being part of that. Beautiful. So oh, thank you so much, Kevin, for sharing that. It's great. Yeah. Uh, Carolina, I think we can hear you now. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Great. Um, yeah, I also really want to thank you, um, Barnaby. I just the way that you speak is so poetic. You're just, yeah, a clown, an artist. So thank you so much. And I also appreciate um, everyone for taking part in this. It was really beautiful. Um, my question is a little two part. Um, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about grief and especially, you know, with the ecological and social crises that we're facing today, how to deal with that with clowning and also with the focus of um, young people, teenagers that are usually, um, well, sometimes are a little bit less um, willing to, to step forward. They're a little bit more worried about their peers and doing mm -hmm. something crazy. So that's my question. Yeah, I I mean these are these are um well, very easy questions to answer, uh, Carolina. Totally <laughs> the easiest questions. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I I mean you know I think it's important that I uh, don't come across as the expert who has all the answers to all these things, right? Like ecological crises or how to deal with them or teenagers having emotional and psychological issues. Um, and I don't pretend that clown has all the answers either. So I am in this same space of not knowing as you, right? We're all in that space. I think it's really important to recognize that. We don't know how to deal with these situations we are foolish and that is the point of clowning. We don't know. We've created a mess, a shitstorm for ourselves and um, there isn't really an easy way out. I do believe, uh, I was just listening to some, um, I was listening to uh, Eckhart Tolle yesterday in an interview and talking about, you know, that he just believes that human consciousness is going to, evolve that it that its only purpose is to evolve 
and that um, it's not devolving, it's evolving. And I like this idea that there is, despite all the all the problems that we're experiencing in the in the world of form, right, in the form consciousness, um, and the suffering that's going with that, that there is a potential for change and transformation over time, probably beyond the time that we will be in, you know, in our own bodies. So I, you know, I do take those problems very seriously and I, and I, and I want to use the, the potential clowning to alleviate those things, but I'm also not in a hurry to say, well, we can deal with those. We can solve those issues and all that clowning has like a, a radical part to play in that. I think specifically in relation to working with young people, I, I've, I find the same struggle. Like it's not the same working with young people in clown as with adults because of the issues you mentioned. And I think that what, what I'm trying to learn to do is to just meet people where they're at. I think that's the piece of clowning that I take with me into all those situations is that it's, it's not necessarily about drawing people out to be vulnerable or, or, or playful, even if they're not ready for that. It's actually the piece of clowning that you have to remember is that it's about heart, the opening of the heart and connecting. So if you can find some way to connect with people, whether it's teenagers or kids or people struggling in the, with, with the ecological crisis, if we can find some way to connect on a heart level with each other, that is already clowning on some level. So I don't know if that answers your question, but that was, I thank you for the question because it provoked a lot of thoughts for me. That was wonderful. Thank you so much, Barnaby. Thanks. I'm happy to answer another one. I know it's, it's over time a little bit, but I think it's all right because there's a break before the next session at 8.15. Mm -hmm. I'd love to ask a little question. Well, little, I don't know. I'm really curious about the liminal space and I, I mm. am a, and how particularly in clown practice, uh, what are other maybe like frames of literal or metaphor frames of exploring the liminal space? Like I know, like uh, in the clown, the space between things like, how, how are other ways yeah. apart from doorway entry and exit? I'm curious. Yeah. Yeah. Because then entra literal entrances and exits are super fun to play with, you know, partly it's also about the visible and the invisible, right? Um, so if we walk down a street in regular clothes, we are sort of invisible most of the time, right? We blend in, but if we put on, a uh, really colorful hat, we become a little bit more visible. So it's a, it's like a halfway point, right? It's like uh, starting to be a little conspicuous, a little different, draw attention, but not too much. Then if we put on a red nose or we put on a really garish costume that's different for everyone, we become even more visible. We, it's almost like we're on, even though we're just in a public space. So it's not a literal coming in and out of a door, but it's kind of switching on a visibility in a public space. So one of the things I do in my course is I get people to put on these uh, crazy costumes and then go for a walk, go out to a public park and just notice, not do anything particularly, but just notice how they draw attention, what happens. Um, so that's one example. I think that, Thinking about that might lead you to some other, other thoughts, right? That we could, how in real everyday life can we cross boundaries? I once went into a, um, I, I was teaching as a lecturer in the university and I got, I was upset with um, one of the, some of the things that management were doing. So I went into a staff meeting in clown, in my clown costume and those, and I just clowned in the staff meeting. I didn't let anyone sort of, do a normal staff meeting. I just kind of clowned and messed around and, you know, so it's possible to cross boundaries and do things that are out of your comfort zone when you're 
in sort of extreme states. And maybe that was a reactive thing to do. And for I'm not sure it led to positive outcomes, but it was fun. <laughs> it helped lighten the atmosphere for me and for everybody a little bit. And it put some people's backs out as well, of course. Some people were upset. So when you cross boundaries, it's going to upset people. Um, so how can you, how, what, what are the rules and structures in your everyday life that you can break or not necessarily break like, like this? Because what clowns do, right? It's like, it's like bend it. They bend the rules. They're very good at bending the rules and maybe eventually they snap, but they don't kind of, they're not aggressive. They're not destructive. They're playful. So they like to just kind of like go in and play on the boundary and make you start to question the boundary itself. You're like, oh, is that really a boundary? Is that just, was that just a boundary in my head all the time? And they make us question those things, those, those cultural norms, right? I think that gender exploration is a kind of clowning. I've always felt that um, drag, for example, you know, from long ago, drag and, and uh, transgender practices, transvesticism, all these kinds of things, playing with binaries, playing with the logic that, that keeps society uh, fixed is a clownish practice. So thanks, thanks for the question, yeah. Well, unless anyone has a burning question additionally, I guess that this is a good time to wrap up because you need a few minutes break before the next session and probably I do too. <laughs> yeah, I just want to say thank you, Barnaby, for being here. It's like doubly exciting for me to see more and more clowning entering the ecoversity space and to be kind of being infused into these conversations and uh, gatherings. So yeah, I just want to express extreme gratitude to you uh, for your work and the impact it's had on me and now, you know, kind of slowly moving into this space and uh, yeah. Yeah, Thanks, hopefully Dan. there's really, more, more weaving. It's been really good, uh, you know, this journey that we've gone on together. And I'm so happy that, um, you know, you're finding your path and, through clowning and come and take a, an, a live course at some point. It'd be great to have you in the class or, and any of you, all of you. <laughs> Lots of love. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you.